The Thunderstorm. It got very windy today. It seemed like a thunderstorm was about to hit. I sat in my grounded car for a moment, appreciating the sound of the distant thunder. Though not the flash of lightning, or something. When I was dumb and little, I received what I thought was amazing advice. I remember eloquently complaining about thunder, and in response being told, Once you hear the thunder, it means you survived the lightning. In terms of thunderstorm worries, I've come down quite a bit. But now that I am somewhat wiser, I frequently return to that old piece of wisdom, rain or shine, and frankly, am confused as to what to make of it. While the electricity stayed on and the storm went around my neighborhood, I thought back to the last time I was scared of nature. Now that some time has passed, I see it as an experiment worthy of old Ben Franklin himself, the inventor of the last light bulb you'll ever need, <laughs> a.k.a. the spicy jar. <laughs> it happened many years ago, but I remember all the good parts in great detail. I moved far from humanity, where no one could possibly see or hear me. And as I felt the heavy air throughout the day, I carefully staged my own lightning experiment. This required several trips and all kinds of gadgets. And sure as heck, flashes of lightning began appearing quite a distance away. So I found a nice bold spot where, frankly, it looked like lightning struck more than once and drove two long metal rods into the ground. Then I bent one over the other to drive their other ends into the ground as well. And as the wind began picking up and the flashes became more intense, I affixed some fairy lights to the rods, as if to attract static electricity even more. I proceeded to have my dinner, standing up, somewhat worried, staring at the approaching mayhem. And as the thunder grew all too near, and nearly deafening, I put earbuds in my ears, and to spite the storm even further, played We Are All Connected, indeed. And then I did something that would give even old Mr. Franklin the heebie-jeebies. I laid down beneath the metal cross I erected in a snow angel position. The storm got so loud around me that for a faint fraction of a nanosecond it occurred to me that perhaps next time I should check the weather before going camping. But I thought better of it, you know. Adventure is adventure. You can't outsmart it. And you shouldn't, because the whole point of camping at the edge of woods is reconnecting with nature. It is not a blurry memory, and I can tell you with all certainty. While my tent cradled me to sleep nice, dry, and well, I was awoken at least once, and by one of the loudest thunders I've ever heard. It had to have hit near, I recall feeling unsettled, though I fell back asleep within the same second or so. Though it is probably not true, it sure felt like the storm lasted two whole hours. It was big. It was raw, driven hard 
by the Great Lake Michigan. Today, I pretty much almost feel bad that I fell asleep. But I was scared, not lonely, but just scared of the whole mess around me. It got to me. That is when I realized that the advice from my childhood is no good. In fact, it's the worst thing I've ever heard. But my tent held up, and I even had dry firewood in the morning. I covered it with a large trash bag the night previous, and I highly recommend doing that. And as you can imagine, the morning was incredibly fresh. It was crisp and new. I didn't feel like a survivor, but a person who was being taken care of by nature. In that beautiful morning, my scary storm transformed into really good medicine. Medicine in a story that I tell and retell with great appreciation. If I had to go through it again, or if you need advice in case of something similar happens to you, whether you are laying on the ground like a starfish or an angel, or sit in the woods away from trees, including dry ones that could fall, you are just about in the same shape. So if you have some energy left in you, and I didn't, stay up. Don't be scared. There is an order to nature. Storms pass frequently, and rarely do they hurt. In fact, they tend to nurture. Be wise, be safe, cover your ears, but try to stay up. If you are deep in the woods, then rest assured the storm is for you. It is to remind you that you are human second and the creature of the stars first. You are nature, and so is the storm and the stars behind it, and everything else must fall into that order. This way... Stress and overwork will shift from seeming like a pretty good lifestyle to feeling like a big mistake. Your well-being and health must come first. Honestly, it should not take a powerful storm to remind you that you are neither a mouse nor a worker. You are not expendable or replaceable. You are not lost, and you are certainly not a castaway. If that is what you feel, then you must leave and find your storm right this moment. Find a better pivot point in life, a better beginning for your future. It may sound like woo-woo fluff now, but it is true that you are a creature of the stars first. Nothing could be more true, to be honest. It takes a storm, so let the universe reach out to you. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared of what you really are.